change of plans. I did not expect to come down with influenza B, but I feel like trash. So you get one extra day with a sub, and I get to stay home and delay my amazing trip to Florida. So that's fun. Um, today we're going to cover some notes on carbohydrates, and we're going to go through four learning targets in Unit 3, Learning Target 3, 4, 5, and 8. And so for each of the macromolecules that are listed below, we're going to talk about their structure, function, examples. We're going to draw them, and then we're going to talk about how they're involved in homeostasis. So I've got this word macromolecule up there. Macro means large. Molecule means big chemistry thing. So the four macromolecules are big, large chemistry things are carbs, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So let's go ahead and get started by talking about carbohydrates. There's just an empty slide. Here we go. Carbohydrates in your note sheet. Uh, what you're going to want to write down is that carbohydrates are made of three elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and they're always found in the same ratio or kind of the same balance. One carbon for every two hydrogens and every one oxygen. That tends to be pretty standard for all carbohydrates. <coughs> they can be found in really long chains, like this one here. They can also coil up to make rings, and they can make single and double bonds between all of those carbons within a carbohydrate. Feel free to pause the video as often as you need to to get through the notes today. All right, some examples of carbohydrates. When we talk about carbs, we have to talk about the three categories of carbohydrates. First category is monosaccharides. Mono means one, saccharide means sugar. So these are carbohydrates that only have one sugar building block in them. So that would be a simple sugar like glucose, which is what plants make. Disaccharides, that prefix di means two. So these are carbohydrates that have two sugars put together, or double sugars. And an example of that would be sucrose, which is table sugar. It's the stuff you put on your Cheerios or the stuff that you put into cookies when you're baking. And then the last category is a polysaccharide. Just like in... Oh, excuse me. Just like in math, poly means many, like a polygon or a polynomial. So a polysaccharide is a complex sugar that has lots and lots and lots of little sugar pieces. And examples of that would be starch or cellulose. The function of carbohydrates is their primary function is that they are an energy source for all living things. Mono and disaccharides are used as quick, fast sources of energy for us. And then the polysaccharides can also be used as building blocks to build up plant structures. So if you think about starch, you think about plant roots and how that's a, a structural thing. And then cellulose is the woody parts of cell walls. So that's what allows plant cells to be so, uh, to stand up even though they don't have any skeletal systems. And that's the part that makes wood. So lumber and boards and all that kind of stuff, they're all made of cellulose. So as far as building carbohydrates, and breaking them apart, uh, there are two, two processes. So dehydration synthesis is the process of putting carbohydrates together or linking together those monosaccharide pieces by removing a water between them. And I've got a video that I'm going to play in just a second to show you that. Hydrolysis is the opposite. It's where you can break apart really large polymers like starches by adding water to those large polymers and it will split them in half. I apologize for this, but this is the best I got for a video. So if you could try to just follow along, what I'm going to draw here is dehydration. So I'm going to start with a hexagon, which is the shape of most carbohydrates or monosaccharides. And then attached to the edge of those is always an OH group. And so here's the next, the next one right next door, and you can see there's two hexagons, each of them with an O and an H in the middle. Now I want to stick them together, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away water. So if you look, I had an H, an H, and an O that I was taking off. 
Well, if you put H, H, and O together, that makes H2O water. And when you take that off, the only thing that's left in between them is that one single oxygen. So I'm going to draw my carbohydrate with that one oxygen. And here's my other monosaccharide. And that's going to reach over and grab onto that oxygen. Now I went from two sugars to one sugar linked in the middle. I'm going to try to show you guys what it looks like when we have um, hydrolysis. I can get this to play. Is it going to play? Uh, sorry. So there is your big complicated disaccharide. It's already linked together. And what we're going to do is we're going to take water and we're going to stuff it in between them. And it's going to interrupt that bond between that oxygen and the other sugar. And it's going to break them apart. And so I'm going to have an H from that water attached to that side of the oxygen, the HO, the other part of the water, attached to our second monosaccharide. Now you can see that they've been forced apart, and that used to be a water molecule, but now it's pushing those two monosaccharides apart, and we are left with two singles instead of them being linked up together. much about carbohydrates why do we care about how to put them together and break them apart it's because they're really important for homeostasis our body is constantly trying to balance out carbohydrates by balancing our blood sugar so we use hormones like insulin and glucagon to either raise or lower our blood sugar so if our blood sugar is too high because of the things that we've eaten or the things that we drink um, what we're going to do is we're going to release hormones to store the extra sugar in our liver and we're going to pack them together using dehydration synthesis to go from simple sugars that are pure energy to storage sugars in our liver. But then on the flip side, if our blood sugar starts to get really, really low and we're running low on sugar, we will release hormones that are going to do hydrolysis. They're going to break apart those large stored sugars and provide us with some rapid energy. Plants are going to do basically the same thing. They're going to make lots and lots of starches to store their extra sugar down in their roots or they are going to free all those up and send them up into their cells to use for energy or they're going to stack them all together in their cell walls as cellulose and use that for growth. That's all we've got for today. Um, please be nice. Please be nice to the sub. That would be great and I will see you guys soon. You can always email me if you have any questions.